Welcome to the DC Preps, Full Court Press. Ross, we're in a 2014. Area boys basketball has been going on for over a month, however. What are some things that have stood out to you so far? So we just finished Christmas break, and the big tournament for our local teams is always the Plano Christmas Classic, and we had four teams down there this year. We had Caneland, Hinkley Big Rock, Indian Creek, and Genoa Kingston. And it was actually kind of a disappointment for our local teams this year. All four of them lost their first game, which means they all go into the consolation bracket. The one bright spot that stood out was Caneland. Uh, they rallied to win their last three games of the tournament, placed ninth. So it was good for them to get back. And they're playing against some smaller competition. But, you know, wins are wins uh, in the non-conference. You always take them. And it's never a bad thing for your resume uh, when you get into the seating for, for IHSA. Um, as we get into the second half of the season here, the NI Big 12 is going to be really interesting. I, I don't think you really have a dominant team. Sycamore looks to be maybe the favorite overall, but teams like Caneland and DeKalb certainly are going to be in the mix moving forward. Yeah, the NI Big 12 it seems like it's a close race every year, like you said, it looks that way again. You mentioned DeKalb. Ross caught up with the Barb Junior Guard reload. All right, we're here with the Cal Junior Guard, Rudy Lopez. Now, Rudy, you're one of the few returners from last year's team. You've incorporated a lot of new players, like uh, the trio of sophomores, Ethan Conroy, Michael Pollock, and Luke Davis, and then also Dre Brown coming in as a junior. What's it like been incorporating all those new players into the team? Uh, it's it's fine to me. I think that it's nothing's really going to change. I mean, we're kind of young, but I think we can still compete with anybody in our conference. Yeah, well, one of uh, those players, Ethan Conroy, is getting some minutes of the one, and uh, it's allowed you to slide over to a shooting guard spot. How do you like that kind of transition? Uh, I like I like playing the two guard better because I think it's easier just for me and like my game and the way I play. So I like playing the two better than the one. Yeah. Well, lastly, you know, we're getting into the second half of the season here. What are some of the keys for you guys moving forward? Uh, you know, as we really get into conference play. Uh, I think the second half of the season. The Cavs are change it around. Maybe see a better team, a better record, do better in the second half of the season. Well, Steve, we talked about the area basketball scene on the boys' side. Give us an update on the girls' side. Well, I think to me the one team that's really stood out so far is Sycamore. You were at the game when they beat DeKalb back in December. That was a surprise to me, but in the weeks after that, I think it's not that much of a surprise. They go to Oswego East, the tournament featuring mostly 4A teams and they take second place. You know, Bailey Gilbert, a junior, has been a scoring machine for them. I think that's a team that has a great shot at winning a regional and, and also a conference title. I mean, that DeKalb Sycamore at the matchup at the Convo in about a month, that's looking like it's going to be for the Northern Illinois Big 12 East title. And, and don't count out DeKalb either. Sure, their record may not be what they want it to be, but they played a ton of Class 4 8 teams this year. The, the Montini Christmas tournament was just loaded with great programs. So that's a matchup at the Congo Ladies Market, I think, is going to be a really good one. Um, small school wise, I think a team that's that sort of stood out so far is, is Indian Creek. Uh, they take second at, at Amboy over Christmas break. They, they've got some nice players in Joseph Yeo, Samantha Mulvey, players like that. So it should be an, an interesting second and a half this year. Yeah, well, very good. We'll see how the second half develops. That'll do it for this edition of the Full Court Press. Keep it here at dailychronicle.com for all your preps coverage.